So let's talk about the appropriate nursing and collaborative interventions for elimination of the bowel. Now, in terms of primary prevention, we want to consider just different environmental factors, the hydration status of a patient, making sure they have enough dietary fiber um, to create nice, bulky, soft stools, that they have physical activity, which is going to help with gastromotility, and that they have a maintenance of regular toileting practices putting yourself on a bowel schedule where the patient is um, uh, eliminating their bowels regularly, kind of at the same time every day, and is a very healthy practice for bowel elimination. And remember, the purpose of primary prevention is to prevent anything from becoming a problem. So by practicing um, healthy habits for good bowel um, uh, health will prevent problems with um, things like constipation down the line. Now there are a number of secondary prevention or screening tests that are done, um, such as colonoscopies, that occult blood screening, testing for um, blood in the stool that you can't see, uh, prostate cancer screenings. These are all typical normal preventions and secondary, secondary preventions and screenings um, done related to the GI tract. And if you take a look on 160 of your Giddens text, it talks about the specifics of who should go un undergo these procedures and how often. So go ahead and take a look at that paragraph now. Now in terms of collaborative interventions, the same as it is for urinary elimination, we're really treating this, the treatment strategies really depend on what the underlying condition or the cause is. So we have to really get at what the cause of the bowel elimination issue is and then address that specific problem. Now there's a number of pharmacologic agents that can be used for this especially as it relates to things like constipation, but also things like diarrhea. Um, and that includes some things that just help increase motility of the bowel or decrease motility of the bowel, or even antibiotics if an infection is present. And then of course, the, in, the idea of incontinence management. Um, in, in our hospitalized patients, if there's someone who has you know, a C. diff infection, Clostridium difficile, which causes copious amounts, very large amounts of frequent, very watery diarrhea caused by a bacterial infection. There's actually, um, it's sort of, like a, sort of like a Foley catheter, but it's for the rectum and it's inserted and then the stool drains into this bag through a tube um, out of the rectum rather than getting into like an adult diaper, adult brief, which then could cause a lot of skin breakdown if that's constantly on the patient. So some of those incontinence management uh, tools can be helpful. Now there's certainly other invasive procedures and surgical interventions that imbo involve bowel elimination. And if you look at page 162, that first column talks about a few of those, like a, col uh, a colon resection, where um, part of the bowel is removed and then those two ends are kind of surgically sutured back together to create an, uh, a new bowel. Um, you can have a colostomy where the bowel is actually diverted out through the abdomen and then they have a colostomy bag that the stool um, empties out into rather than passing the rest of the way through the GI tract. Or hemorrhoidectomy um, is a, where the removal of hemorrhoids around the anus. Um, and those are kind of the most typical interventions. What's kind of neat about the C. diff these days is they can actually use um, donations from very healthy donors um, to actually give like a fecal transplant, a stool transplant from a healthy donor um, and directly put that into a patient who has C. diff and is not successful on, on any antibiotics and actually increasing like the good flora, the healthy bacteria in the gut through actually a donor's stool that's, you know, injected into the rectum. So um, there's a lot of really neat certain interventions and certainly this is an area that is always growing in healthcare. Now, um, a, a GI doctor and a GI clinic would be the place that most of these um, more long-term or chronic in issues would be dealt with. But you're gonna see things like diarrhea and constipation no matter where you work. Did you ever see that children's book that was called Everybody Poops? My kids had it when they were little. And it literally talks about, you know, whales poop and 
dogs poop and people poop and some animals poop on the run and don't even pay attention to where they're pooping and some poop people or some animals find a specific spot and it's this whole boot book about poop and i think the idea is that it's you know normalizing um the idea of bowel elimination for toddlers who are thinking about toileting or toilet training um, but the reality is everybody poops, right? That's the whole gist of that book. And so no matter where you're working, if you're working with patients, they are going to be pooping and you want to be able to promote regular defecation. And so some of the things that help with that are privacy, making sure they're in a good position. You know, those squatty potties are incredibly popular and it's because it really does put a patient in the proper positioning to have optimal elimination. And then you want to help them encourage normal uh, timing, setting up a regular bowel schedule, um, sometimes after meals. And then you also need to think about your hospitalized patients or homebound or nursing home patients who are unable to practice toileting self-care, making sure that they have the assistance that they need to have as normal of a bowel elimination uh, process as they can. A few other things you can do to help your patients have promoting promote regular um, healthy defecation would be making sure they have adequate fluid intake and a proper diet, especially focusing on things like fiber from fruits and vegetables and whole grains and that the client is exercising. Um, and then that three to five times a week, and just walking is a really good way to promote regular defecation. Think about your patients on bed rest and making sure you're doing passive range of motion or active range of motion if they're able to participate to help with that gastric motility. Now, when we're talking about managing diarrhea, we want to monitor the stools to see how much diarrhea the patient's having and how often and how watery it really is. Is it just a little bit loose or is it very watery? We want to assess and monitor for fluid imbalance. Patients can become very dehydrated from um, having diarrhea. And we also want to assess their skin and making sure their skin integrity in their perineal area um, is intact and not altered because of the, you know, the diarrhea that's constantly on their body. We can also teach about a proper diet. Now, uh, really fluid intake is most important when someone's having an acute diarrhea issue. Um, so clear liquids, uh, we can do teach the BRAT diet, which is a, a bulking diet. It's gonna help bulk up the stools. So BRAT stands for bananas, rice, applesauce, and toast. It's a really good um, diet to have if you're, if you're having diarrhea. And then you wanna teach patients about foods to avoid. And I always say anything greasy, anything spicy, and anything dairy are things to stay away from um, when you're having diarrhea. Now there are anti-diarrheal medications like Imodium out there. Um, they're not recommended for acute diarrhea because there's probably something going on that your body needs to get rid of and that's a healthy thing to do. But um, there are places that are times where that's appropriate to use as well. And the way those work is they just literally slow up um, the GI per, uh, peristalsis, the peristalsis, the gastric motility, it slows it down so stool stays in the GI tract longer. More of the water is then absorbed by the, by the intestines and then therefore the stool becomes more firm. Now constipation on the other hand, we're going to want to increase the intake of higher fiber foods, increase fluid intake and exercise, provide for privacy so the patient has time to defecate, um, provide, put the, help pa put the patient in a position that's going to best facilitate defecation, allow for uninterrupted, unhurried time, and then offer laxatives or stool softeners um, when these lifestyle changes are ineffective. Laxatives are going to help move things through um, more smoothly, um, and stool softeners literally soften the stool and um, don't allow for as much absorption of the water out of the stool, keeping it more soft. Now, in terms of medications, the most common medications for bowel elimination, like we've discussed, are antibiotics if there's a in bacterial infection. There's agents to manage constipation, like stool softeners, laxatives, and enemas. Um, enemas are when a some kind of fluid substance is in, 
instilled into the rectum and goes up into the GI tract, into the intestines, while the patient's laying on their side. Um, and then that fluid dwells there for a period of time, softens up the stool, and then is expelled, and then hopefully um, produces a bowel movement. And analgesics uh, for pain control when the other things aren't working. We talked about having a colostomy being one of the options for surgical intervention where the bowel is diverted out through the abdomen and then a, a bag is placed around what is called the stoma. The stoma is the opening of that bowel um, where stool goes, passes into the, the stoma, through the stoma into the colostomy bag rather than out through the rectum. And nurses will need to manage these colostomy bags. You'll need to pay strict attention to the skin care and the peristomal um, skin assessment um, and monitor the type of um, excrement that comes out. We'll be talking about uh, managing colostomies more in lab as well. But remember, um, we want to think about our client's psychosocial needs. This can be a, a source of embarrassment for the patient when they have a colostomy. So when you're um, changing a colostomy bag, make sure you're being professional, that you're showing acceptance. There's going to be some odor and you need to manage your face, put your poker face on so that the patient is not embarrassed. Um, and expect patients to participate in their ostomy care as they're able and make sure that you're providing teaching for home care, especially if a patient is new to having a bowel diversion. So you can see how uh, these different interrelated concepts all play into elimination. Uh, if you have too much fluid, uh, or sorry, if you're not taking enough fluid, you can have constipation. If you've got watery diarrhea, you can have a fluid deficit and become dehydrated. Mobility infects elimination. Um, your ability to have cognitive understanding affects your ability to self-care and self-toilet and nutrition all plays into elimination. So all of these are the interrelated concepts for bowel elimination. Finally, there's some featured exemplars and don't forget you'll be doing your exemplar worksheets on constipation and diarrhea and the Davis text has some really nice sample um, exemplars of how to do these self-care, this care for constipation, diarrhea, and incontinence. And so those are the three that we're gonna focus on for the purpose of this week's class. Certainly colorectal cancer is another exemplar of bowel elimination um, issues. This last screen I'll leave you with, you're welcome to pause it and take a look. It's just a nice concept map, um, kind of highlighting some of the priorities of the concept of elimination for nursing. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.